Occam's razor, all other things being equal the simplest solution is the best. In other words when multiple competing theories are equal in other respects, select the theory that introduces the fewest assumptions and postulates the lowest stretch of the imagination, based on the evidence. When looking at the origins of the Olmec and subsequent indigenous American civilizations, Occam's razor applies very well. Why look for the origins of the Olmec civilization and that, of other indigenous Americans, by looking across the sea, if the natives in the area fit the bill quite well. While the intent of Afrocentrics is to build pride in their group that has been historically downtrodden, and underrepresented by historians, these misleading claims, end up overshadowing and downplaying the accomplishments of other peoples who have every right to be proud of their own ancestors' accomplishments. Furthermore, it takes away from legitimate research into African accomplishments, both in Africa, throughout history, and that of the African diaspora in the Americas, post-1492. Genetics has already shown us how human migrations occurred. Studies of indigenous populations have not yielded any modern African genetic markers, except for genetics that are shown to come from indigenous populations that were in proximity to post-1492 African slave populations, or in proximity of Afro-descent Freeman or Maroon populations. Those genetic markers have been proven to be of post-colonial contact. The only other African genetic markers found in indigenous populations, are those that all humans out of Africa share from that first migration out of Africa over 50,000 years ago. Who were the Olmec, the Washita, Yamasee, Mochica, and other pre-1492 indigenous populations claimed by Afrocentrics and black Indian proponents? The simplest and most accurate conclusion is that they were Native Americans, ancestors to today's Native Americans, indigenous to the region since the earliest migrations out of Asia, and not some migration from across the sea in the era of the earliest Old World civilizations to the present, like Mesopotamia and Egypt. Indigenous Americans are the proud recipients of this rich historical heritage, and deserve to have their heritage protected from historical dishonesty from ethnocentric groups trying to validate themselves at the cost of other people's heritage. Eurocentrics committed this act in the past, and still do, as seen by the whole Kennewick debacle, and Afrocentrics have picked up the mantle. Some would still argue that there are oceanic currents that are like fast speed conveyor belts that could have easily brought over people from the west coast of Africa to the Americas. If this were so, why have Africans not come over to the Americas in droves the same way they migrate to Europe? In this time of scarcity, Africans are constantly migrating for better opportunities yet they are not hopping on this miraculous conveyor belt and jumping over to Brazil. Maybe it is because it is not as easy as some people claim. Without sails one could drift west towards America, but there's a good chance of recirculating around the gyre without ever reaching the American coastline. Currents alone are slow, and journeys of long duration seem impossible in small boats because of lack of storage for fresh water and food. It is important to understand that deep ocean currents are not high-powered conveyor belts that overwhelm vessels and zip them across the ocean. Currents are extremely variable over time and space. It is in fact relatively easy to maneuver in and around ocean currents, even going against them, if one has sails or even paddles. From North Africa, the Canary Current travels at a whopping average speed of 0.67 miles per hour. The seas between the African coast and both the Canary Islands and Cape Verde, are so unfriendly that Cape Verde was uninhabited when the Portuguese arrived. The Canary Islands were colonized by a Berber Amazigh population from North Africa and then remained isolated for millennia. Farther south, the Bengala current travels north at speeds of 0.38 miles per hour. It hasn't helped the many who have drowned trying to cross to the Canary Islands. But, for argument's sake, let us say that these hypothetical Africans made it to the North Equatorial Current. They would be moving along at speeds of 0.33 miles per hour. At this speed, they would die of boredom before they made it to the Americas. Even worse, they could be caught in the North Equatorial Counter Current and start going backward at speeds of 0.93 miles per hour. But what about the South Equatorial Current with speeds up to 0.67 miles per hour? Say you go from where the South Equatorial Current starts off the coast of Africa straight across to Brazil that is roughly 3500 nautical miles. 
If the current speed were 1 knot which is very high for a sustained open ocean current the time taken to cross in a straight line would be 3500 hours, or 146 days, which is a lot in a small boat drifting with the current, and that is without considering any of the loops or meanders, as they would have also have had to deal with counter currents with speeds of about a quarter of a mile per hour. That is, if they even got to that current, as the coastal region that faces the beginning of the southern equatorial current, first must pass the Guinea current pushing east at speeds of 2.23 miles per hour, and the Angola current pushing south at a speed of 1 mile per hour. So much for the conveyor belt theory. The Gulf Stream, at a much faster speed of 4.47 miles per hour, goes from the Americas to Europe. And yet Caribbeans, prolific sea travelers, were not landing all over Europe. Let's face it. The Atlantic Ocean currents are not a viable theory for claiming Africans were jumping over to the Americas. Africa is not just a hop skip away from South America. You could put the whole continental USA between Africa and Brazil. Yet people are acting like it is just a quick joyride in a boat. Finally, possibility no matter how remote does not mean certainty. The Chinese around Columbus time had much more advanced, massive ships than the Europeans did. They made it all the way to Africa, even carried giraffes back to China, and yet, they never made it to the Americas. Could have, does not mean did. Motive plays a key role as well. Exploration just for exploration's sake is a recent cultural innovation. The Sherpas had the capacity to climb Mount Everest, but saw no purpose in it. It would be much later that leisure adventure would become more prevalent. In this context, old worlders simply had no reason to try to explore the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Most mathematicians around the globe, in Timbuktu, Rome, India, China, etc. had long figured out the Earth's circumference. Many maritime nations had the capacity to sail across the Atlantic. But they had no reason to sail into the empty sea. No one in Africa or Europe ever attempted to cross the Atlantic, because they thought the Atlantic was the same ocean as the Pacific. Furthermore, they knew of no winds, that would bring them back if they had to return. It was seen as suicide. The Chinese who had the best ships in the world at the time, and the wind in their favor, never attempted it either, 